In a world full of cartoon characters, 24-7 shenanigans, and illogical promos, WWE has struggled to bring that big fight feel to its product for the past few years, I'd say. However, now that the forefather of NXT, Triple H, took the helm as the creative lead behind the scenes, WWE has had an air of violence surrounding it due to his introduction of his precious powerhouse Austrian. While some stars have struggled to step out, a certain wrestler has decided to do so by stepping on his opponents. Yeah, I'm talking about Gunther. One of the most destructive stars in WWE today, Gunther has built a reputation off the back of his brutal in-ring style. His matches have been some of the most unique in the company's history, with his strikes leaving his opponents covered head to toe in bruises. So, my name's Wrestleology, and today we take a look back at the WWE career of Gunther. And this one is not going to be for the faint of heart, as you sit in awe at the violence that Gunther brings to sports entertainment. After building up his name, as a powerhouse monster in British independent wrestling, Gunther, then still going by the name Walter, made a massive debut only equaled by his sheer size. Following Pete Dunne's successful defense of his United Kingdom championship at TakeOver Blackpool, Walter debuted for NXT UK by confronting its champion after the match. For those who didn't know who Walter was, you immediately got a sense of his power simply by just looking at him. He wasn't a man that needed a big video package to get over, just the sheer sight of Walter in NXT would be enough to get the fans excited. And Walter's impressive stature will be put on display during his first match in NXT UK a few weeks later, where he defeated Jack Stars in quick fashion, commanding respect through his power. And this dominance alongside his previous interaction with Pete Dunne placed Walter at the front of the line for a shot at Dunne's UK title. So, the match was on at NXT TakeOver New York. There, on a show featuring the likes of Johnny Gargano vs. Adam Cole in a 2 out of 3 falls match, the War Raiders vs. Aleister Black and Ricochet, and a star-studded Fatal 4-Way match for the NXT Women's title, you can make the argument that Walter vs. Dunn actually stole the show due to the unique dominance of Walter and the interesting prospect of Pete Dunn as the world's biggest underdog. Either way, following a brutal contest, Walter was able to fly off the top rope to land on Pete Dunn in order to take home his first championship in the WWE. This victory also spelled the end of Pete Dunne's record-setting reign as United Kingdom champion, ending it at 685 days, a record that would play a big factor into Walter's rise through NXT UK. But this big Goliath didn't plan to stand atop NXT UK by himself. So, on the May 22nd episode of NXT UK, Walter successfully retained his UK title in a rematch against Dunn due to the interference of Fabian Eichner and Marcel Bartel. The trio of Walter, Fabian, and Marcel were known around the British indie scene as Ring Camp, and the trio had reunited in WWE under the new name Imperium. However, with this group continuing to pick fights with the Bruiserweight, Dunn soon realized that the odds were completely stacked against him. So, he decided to reunite another popular stable from the British indie scene, with Tyler Bate and Trent Seven already becoming NXT Tag Team Champions by this point, Dunn decided to invite them over to NXT UK where the trio would reunite as British Strong Style. The two teams would collide a few weeks later in a massive six-man tag team match, however, the conclusion of the match revealed that Imperium had gained a new member. During the match, a mysterious figure made their way down to the ring covered head to toe, and after the referee had accidentally been knocked out, the figure walked into the ring to unmask themselves revealing his identity. Alexander Wolfe was standing in NXT UK. And this was a massive twist in the story, as fans of WWE knew Wolfe mainly through his time in Sanity, there he was a crazed lunatic bent on absolute chaos, so it felt a little strange when he stood next to Walter, whose whole gimmick was about respect and dignity in the ring. Either way though, Imperium got the victory following a powerbomb by Wolf onto Tyler Bate. The feud between these two factions would continue now that Imperium had a new member, however Walter would continue to defend his UK championship even with this feud lingering in the background as he did against Travis Banks on an episode of NXT UK. He would also go on to defend the title at TakeOver Cardiff against Tyler Bate, looking to put an end to the feud. There, following weeks of tension between the two British powerhouse factions, Walter and Bate would put on an absolute war in Cardiff. Walter took his natural role as the ultimate Goliath to Tyler Bates' David. However, despite Bate putting on perhaps the best match of his career thus far, it would be Walter who would ultimately get the job done. 
This came after a near 45 minute war where Walter was able to get the job done with a simple clothesline on an exhausted and battered Tyler Bate. However, now that Walter had definitively put his feud with British Strong Style to bed, he would continue to showcase his dominance over NXT UK, but another group was slowly rising through the brand in the background with Gallus consisting of Joe Coffey, Mark Coffey, and Wolfgang looking to take Imperium's spot as the top faction. Over the next several months, the two teams would continue to cross paths, but this would only be slightly interrupted during the build to Survivor Series that year, where NXT was a prime feature of that year's Survivor Series. You see, that year, the black and gold brand would face Raw and SmackDown in brand warfare. Throughout the build, NXT would invade the main roster and vice versa, and in the lead up to the Big Four event, Imperium would actually show up on Raw for the first time ever with Walter interrupting Seth Rollins. From there, Seth and Walter would actually end up squaring off in the center of the ring due to the heated confrontation moments prior, but despite this huge moment in Walter's career, the match would ultimately end in disqualification with Imperium attacking Seth during the match. But at the pay-per-view, Walter's huge moment on Raw would only result in disaster during the cross-brand tag team match featuring all three teams. Walter was the first man eliminated for Team UK in fairly quick fashion. Perhaps it was a case that Drew McIntyre got lucky during the match, perhaps it was WWE's poor booking that forced Walter to be eliminated in under 3 minutes, but who's to say? In the meantime though, Walter was still treated as an absolute killer in NXT, with that feud with Gallus continuing in the background. The faction war would culminate at TakeOver Blackpool 2, where the group's leader Joe Coffey went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Walter, and there, Walter retained his title by forcing Joe to submit with a side headlock, looking to erase the embarrassing display from Survivor series of course. Around this time Imperium continued to leave their mark as the top faction in NXT, with them beginning a feud with arguably one of the greatest factions in not just NXT, but potentially all of WWE history in the Undisputed Era. This feud would intensify following Walter's match in Blackpool, with Walter being attacked by them, leading to a 4 on 4 tag team match at the Worlds Collide Super Show. This show would feature talent from both NXT and NXT UK, and while matches like DIY vs Mustache Mountain might have tried to steal the show, there would be no topping the war between Imperium and the Undisputed Era in the main event. However, early in the match, things started falling apart with Alexander Wolf suffering an injury due to a brutal kick to the jaw by Bobby Fish, so Wolf was quickly taken out of the match, leaving the main event as a 4 on 3 battle. Fans were shocked as Imperium, for the first time ever, were acting as the underdogs. However, despite this setback, Imperium were still able to get the job done with Walter getting revenge on behalf of Wolf by powerbombing Bobby Fish to get the pin. However, this Worlds Collide pay-per-view took place in January 2020, so WWE soon shut down NXT UK's doors for a while due to that pandemic that you've probably heard about. But upon his return, Walter would continue defending his United Kingdom title. Notably, late in the year, Walter would defend his championship against Ilya Dragunov on an episode of NXT UK, and despite having no fans in attendance, the two would put on one of the most violent brawls in the history of pro wrestling. Following the match, the two men were covered in welts, bruises, and pain as both men were known for being two of the stiffest competitors in the entire company, and even though Walter would win in this case, you can't deny that Dragunov put on the fight of his life. While Tyler Bate acted as a heroic babyface underdog, using the fans to push him during his own 45-minute war with the ring general, Dragunov went out swinging, making sure to give just as much punishment as he was receiving. Walter would continue defending his title in compelling fashion after a few years in WWE where he felt a little underutilized as he was was hidden away on NXT UK, the match with Dragunov reminded fans just how compelling a Walter match can be. So fans would start to pay a bit more attention to him in the months that followed, especially after following yet another retention against A-Kid, Walter would surpass Pete Dunne's impressive record as the United Kingdom Champion on February 19th, 2021. Pete Dunne, before Walter, had the distinct honor of receiving the longest reign in WWE's modern history at 685 days. And with Walter now breaking that record, fans would start to wonder whether WWE had plans for Walter or if this long reign was due to them simply forgetting about him. Well, Walter would remind them of why he had held that title for so long by returning to NXT and attacking Tommaso Ciampa. 
Champa by this point had easily become one of the biggest names in NXT, so Walter's attack on Champa left fans intrigued by the prospect of these two heavy hitters competing in the middle of the ring. So at NXT TakeOver Stand and Deliver, Walter would defend his title against Champa in a hard-hitting affair. In the end, Walter would retain the title with that massive chop that he has become known for over the years. But as intense as that match with Champa was, it was nowhere near as intense as that original war against Dragunov. That match had become mythic by this point in fans' minds, with the brutality of it essentially defining both men. So they decided to hold a rematch at TakeOver 36, where Dragunov finally was able to beat Walter. Dragunov, through his intensity and grit, was able to submit his opponent and put an end to Walter's reign at 870 days. Yes, you heard me, 870 days. The longest reign of a WWE Championship since 1988, that is before Roman Reigns surpassed this number with his own dominating run as Universal Champion earlier this year. And following this huge loss, Walter would pretty much disappear with this monster of NXT UK hibernating for another battle. That is, before making his return to NXT alongside his Imperium stablemates. However, he would be christened a new ring name with fans still split on whether or not it was a good idea. Either way, the man now known as Gunther would look to recapture his aura by putting down some of the top names in the company. And to do so, he notably had a physical transformation in his absence as well. He went from a hulking brute to a much leaner ring general. And using that physical transformation, Gunther would defeat the likes of Roderick Strong, Solo Sokoa, and LA Knight as he looked to head towards another NXT championship. However, despite his best efforts, Gunther would end up losing his shot at winning the NXT world title following a loss to the then champion Braun Breaker. But with that loss, WWE realized that they had nothing left for Gunther on NXT. He had put in the hours and he was ready to finally be called up to the main roster. And on the April 8th episode of SmackDown, Gunther and Marcel Bartel, now known as Ludwig Kaiser, made their official debut on the main roster. Gunther would continue to showcase just how destructive he can be against a variety of local competitors, and of course he would eventually start taking on some of the mainstay competitors of WWE, as he did during an episode of SmackDown against Drew Gulak. And following yet another dominating display, Gunther would continue to attack his opponent after the bell before the Intercontinental Champion Ricochet came down to save Gulak. And this of course kicked off a feud between the two, leading to a massive match on the June 10th episode of SmackDown where Gunther defeated the acrobatic Ricochet to win the Intercontinental title. However, despite Gunther continuously dominating SmackDown as the IC Champion, his teammate in Ludwig Kaiser wasn't so lucky as he suffered a big loss to Shinsuke Nakamura on SmackDown. This loss is quite notable, as it would add another wrinkle to Gunther's character. Following the match, Gunther would punish Ludwig with one of those destructive chops that echoed throughout the arena. In Gunther's mind, failure is not an option, and he proved this by attacking his only friend on SmackDown following Ludwig's loss. Gunther then got revenge on behalf of Kaiser by successfully defending his title against Nakamura on another episode of the Blue Brand. But now, Gunther looked ahead towards Clash at the Castle, the first WWE pay-per-view in the UK since 2003. There, Gunther would take on Sheamus in what many people still look at as the defining match of his reign as Intercontinental Champion. Of course, the IC title was one that eluded Sheamus throughout his entire career up to this point. It's the one title in his decade-plus long run in the company that he has never won. However, despite doing his best to finally win the strap, Sheamus was unsuccessful in his match against Gunther following an epic clash between two of the heaviest hitters in the WWE. In my opinion, this was probably top five matches of the year, if not number one. And Sheamus even received a standing ovation from the crowd following the bout, one that many people never thought would happen for him following years of being stuck in the mid-card throughout his career with every push to the main event scene falling apart in one way or another. Before we move on from this match at Clash of the Castle, another notable advancement took place before the bell. During Gunther's entrance, Ludwig Kaiser would announce him to the ring as fans had become accustomed to. But this time, he didn't do it alone as he stood alongside a returning and debuting Fabian Eichner. There, Fabian was given the new name of Giovanni Vinci as Imperium reunited on the main roster looking to conquer SmackDown. And this trio would continue feuding with the Brawling Brutes, a team consisting of Sheamus, Butch, formerly known as Pete Dunne, and Ridge Holland. However, following another successful defense against Sheamus on an episode of SmackDown, Gunther would continue his reign as his feud with the Celtic Warrior would be put on the back burner. From there, he would focus 
focus his attention on building up his name with credible victories against the likes of Rey Mysterio. He would also defend against Ricochet a few weeks later, cementing that he is in fact better than his high-flying rival. However, while Gunther was used to defeating much smaller men like Ricochet and Rey, he would be in for a rude awakening as Braun Strowman would challenge him to a match for the IC title. Of course, Gunther would get an impressive victory over Strowman following an earth-shattering powerbomb out of the corner, showing that he can defeat a man of any size. But if you think that's impressive, then Gunther would do his best to top it during the Royal Rumble match. I was there, live in attendance, and this was so sick. I'm not even gonna lie, I really wanted Gunther to win. But there, the Intercontinental Champion walked down to the ring at number one and lasted all the way until the final two. Lasting well over an hour in the match, alongside the number two entrant, Sheamus, Gunther would put on an interesting display as the powerhouse Iron Man of the match, and even though he was eliminated by the 30th entrant, Cody Rhodes, fans were universally impressed by the Austrian's performance, and some of us wanted him to win. However, despite not getting the job done in the Rumble match, Gunther was still the champion as WrestleMania 39 loomed ahead, and after defeating Madcap Moss on an episode of SmackDown, Gunther sat back wondering who would be his next challenger leading into the show of shows. On SmackDown, a number one contenders match took place featuring two of the heaviest hitters in the company with Drew McIntyre and Gunther's long-standing rival, Sheamus, battling it out. Drew and Sheamus had become friends by this point, teaming on several occasions, however the prospect of either man competing at WrestleMania was enough to put that aside for a spot on the card. But Gunther would interrupt the match, attacking both men leading to a double disqualification. However, as is tradition in WWE, if you're a heel champion and you attack during a number one contenders match, then both men are automatically placed in a number one contender situation. Not too many things are certain in WWE, but that fact seemingly is. And in this case, his attack on Drew and Sheamus led to one of the best matches in recent memory as the three men walked into WrestleMania looking to steal the show. Drew, Sheamus, and Gunther absolutely went to war at the event as they put on an absolute clinic. But despite the triple threat stipulation, Gunther was able to get the job done after powerbombing Sheamus onto McIntyre before hitting McIntyre with yet another powerbomb to retain. And following this major victory, as well as a victory over Xavier Woods on SmackDown to retain his title, Gunther and the rest of Imperium were drafted over to Raw. From there, Gunther would start making his acquaintances with several of the key players on the red brand, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Matt. Matt Riddle all quickly became rivals for Gunther. But before he could handle any of them, he first had to dispatch of Mustafa Ali at Night of Champions, which he did in a little under 9 minutes. From there, Gunther would return to Raw to take on Kevin Owens in what may have been described as a dream match scenario, and there Gunther would pick up a roll of victory over KO en route to a tag team title match against Sami and Kevin the following week. However, Gunther would suffer a rare loss alongside Ludwig Kaiser following a distraction from Matt Riddle. This distraction comes off the back of several interactions between the two over the prior weeks, and Gunther would get his revenge on the next episode of Raw with a vicious 2 on 1 assault by Gunther and Kaiser following. Riddle's victory over Kaiser on Raw. This in turn would set up a match at Money in the Bank where Gunther successfully retained his title in London against Riddle. However, Gunther is not the only one who chooses to attack his enemies following their matches, as was the case when Drew McIntyre made a shocking return to the WWE following a long hiatus after his WrestleMania barnstormer with Sheamus and Gunther. There, Drew would lay Gunther out with a Claymore kick as the arena exploded, knowing that these two were set for a battle in the near future. However, while Gunther vs. McIntyre was a match set for SummerSlam the following month, Gunther also found himself imbrued in a feud with Alpha Academy alongside his Imperium teammates. More specifically, Gunther had his eyes on Chad Gable, who he claimed was beneath him. So, on an episode of Raw, Gunther faced off against Gable with the promise that he would be able to beat Gable in under 5 minutes, however Chad was able to outmaneuver the champion, proving that he might just be able to defeat Gunther using his intelligence as he fought against Gunther's overwhelming strength. This infuriated Gunther, with his anger being brought to his match against Drew McIntyre. At SummerSlam, Gunther would defeat McIntyre to retain the title as Chad Gable loomed on in the background knowing that his feud with the champion was far from over. Also, I wasn't a massive fan of that Drew and Gunther match at SummerSlam, but you guys let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. Now it looks like we're probably set for Chad Gable versus Gunther at Payback, and I'm super excited for that match, and I could even see Chad Gable being the guy to defeat Gunther's longest reigning IC title reign once Gunther actually gets it. 
Over the past few years, Gunther has unquestionably become one of the biggest attractions in professional wrestling. The ring general put on some of the most violent matches in WWE history, with each encounter leaving his opponent covered in welts, scars, and blood. In NXT, he shocked the world by not only defeating Pete Dunne to gain the UK title, but also holding the title for nearly two and a half years. Through his time in NXT, he'd built up a reputation as the Austrian powerhouse, as fans still look back on those matches with delight, and now that he's on the main roster, fans can unclench as many were afraid of Gunther's future due to WWE's habit of restricting its performers. Well, just look back at his matches against the likes of Sheamus, Drew McIntyre, you'll see that Gunther's every bit of a destroyer as one. Walter was. And that's especially with the fact that he is literally about to break the record and become the longest reigning intercontinental champion in WWE history. In fact, he's arguably even more dangerous now than he ever was before. And with him still having plenty left in the tank, you just know that the ring general will continue to dominate WWE for years to come. Thanks for watching and subscribe if you enjoyed.